Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So it's my first vlog in quite some time and I apologize for the gap. The winter got very busy with a lot of new product introductions and new technology that was released that I just got busy with that and kind of lost track of the vlogs. I also like to shoot these outdoors. Somehow they don't feel right in the house. So it's the first beautiful day we've had all winter. We've had a really rough winter here in the Northeast. And I thought, let me get outside and actually shoot one of the clips. And I promise to try to do one of these each week because in these vlogs, I get a chance to sort of talk about emerging technology or changes to legislation that could affect our hobby or maybe other cool stuff that just seems to be happening in that space. So you can count on one of these a week for me and I'll honestly do my best to get them out. All right, so this week's vlog, I wanna talk about a few different things, maybe four specific topics and one really interesting topic at the end that I need some feedback on. The first thing I wanna talk about are the new drone laws in Canada. Now I did a clip on this a couple weeks back where I went into great detail about what that legislation means for drone flyers in Canada. And a lot of people are wondering, where well, Rick, you live in the United States, why do you care about Canada? But as I said in the clip, this is really a big community that we all fly together, even if we're in different states or different countries. It's a hobby that we share because the reason you put that quad up is to take beautiful aerial footage of your area. And when I see video footage come in from Ireland or Spain or somewhere else that I've never been, it just opens up a world for me that I would normally not be able to see. I may never travel there. So seeing that footage is just amazing. And these laws in Canada are so restrictive and again, such a knee-jerk reaction, I think, to misinformation that it effectively eliminates the ability to fly a drone in a large part of the country, outside of the most remote areas of Canada. And it bothers me because even though it isn't the same in the States, we have a much more relaxed environment in the States for flying, I worry that every time a law like that is passed, uh, it affects everybody else because other countries are going to look at that law and say, well, we, they did it there and nobody really complained, so why don't we do it here? So that, that winnowing of our resources, or I should say the winnowing of our rights, scares me a little bit. So I'm in full support of having that law adjusted so that it's not as restrictive as it is. Now, along those lines, through those efforts, there are a bunch of petitions out there that you can get involved with. You can sign those petitions. And if you check that video on my page, you'll see in the comment sections, at least three or four different petitions that are down there that you can sign up online and sign those petitions because that law isn't actually final yet. It's gonna be final, I think, later this summer. And they're out for comment now for public comment. So filling in that petition, will definitely help their efforts up there in Canada. And again, I worry that if I were a flyer in Canada, this effectively grounds my quad any major city, except if I'm in the really remote areas of that country. So it's effectively squashing that hobby in Canada. And I'm working on a couple of clips that explain to the public just how safe these devices are. And I've got a bunch of ideas that I'm gonna do there. I'll probably put one clip together that if you're fighting that kind of thing in your community, if it's your local beach or your local park, I'll put this clip together in a non-aggressive fashion and you can take that and send that to that board of the park or whoever's governing that beach or if there's a town council that's about to vote on it, you can promote that clip and send it to them and say, look, this is a clear explanation of what quads are doing today and how safe they are today. So hopefully that'll help you guys. But in the meantime, sign those petitions underneath. Another thing you can do to help is there's an organization called Node, N-O-D-E, and I'll put a link for it below in the comments. And they're, uh, it's an affiliation of drone manufacturers that are sort of helping to educate educate the public and especially the legislative part of the public against these kind of draconian restrictions and regulations. So I'll put a link down there for that. You can look into it. You may want to join that organization because the more people that are part of that, when they go to talk to these legislative bodies, it seems like a bigger deal to them as opposed to, you know, a small group of people that are just cranky. All right. So that's all I wanted to talk about there. Now, along those lines, there's been a struggle with, um, people being bad with drones, right? Like we, we all fly responsibly, but there's always one knucklehead that takes whatever cool technology is out there and twists it enough to get the public upset about it. And then that's the only story that ever gets spread around. So the second topic I wanna talk about is sort of this emerging technology around identifying quads so that when you fly it, people know you're in the area and you're a responsible flyer because you've registered it and you've got your registration number. So this past couple of weeks, DJI released a white paper on a new technology that they're proposing uh, for lack of a better term, we'll call it a digital license plate. And what it is, a beacon inside the drone that actually broadcasts on a very special frequency your FAA registration number. So if somebody's in the area, so if there are firefighters out and there's a fire going on and they see a drone fly overhead, they can, on their receiver, know immediately what that drone's uh, FAA registration number is. And you shouldn't be out there, so they can identify the drone based on that. Now, this is something that would help an awful lot because it would allow 
law enforcement people, restricted area people to sort of know if drones are up and what drone it is and whose drone it is. So I think this is a great idea. I think that digital license plate is really nice too because one of the things I picked on with the Canada legislation was that they required you to have your name, address, and phone number on the quad, which to me is an invasion of privacy. So in the States we have the FAA registration process where you register, it's all private, you get a registration number and that's all that has to be on your quad. This would just digitally broadcast that to make it easier for other people to identify that quad. So. I think it's a cool technology and I think it's a great step in the right direction because the opposing view, which is much more onerous, is that there would be some kind of national airspace system that would identify where all these quads are at any given moment and you would actually have to file a flight plan. So if you're going to put your quad up in your backyard, you've got to, before you fly, electronically file a flight plan for that quad. How long you're going to fly, how far you're going to fly, where you're going to fly. None of us want to do that. That just makes the hobby, it just sucks all the fun out of the hobby for me to sit down and actually put a flight plan together for a small little quad that I'm going to fly in a field. So if I have a choice between those two, I'm going for the digital license plate. I think that's a great way to go. So that's the second topic. The third topic is kind of along those lines. And again, I know I'm trying to keep a theme going here about regulations and the removal of them, but it has to do with this concept or this technology called ADSB. Now, ADSB, I've done a clip on this uh, when I did the M200. I'll do another clip that explains it in great detail. But ADSB is a new technology that's satellite based and it replaces, or it's proposing to replace, radar, which has been around since forever. And airplanes are based on ground based radar, so they know where the airplanes are. And then if there's a gap between the radar, they've got to go to two different radar stations to figure out where it is. ADSB is a different technology that is being mandated for placement in planes, commercial planes going forward. And what ADSB does is it broadcasts the exact position of that plane to a grouping of satellites or a, a network of satellites so that ground control knows immediately where all the planes are in the area. Better yet, the planes know where all the other planes are in the area. Now, initially that's gonna be for sort of an alerting system, but I could see where that could be designed to, as it matures, um, avoid other planes. So there are warnings going off that there's a plane within 300 feet or 300 yards of you. So I think it's a cool technology for commercial applications. It's also being deployed in drones now. Now it isn't a broadcast in the drones, it's a receive in the drones, but I like that because if I'm flying my quad and a plane's coming over the horizon and I didn't know it was coming, this immediately could pop up a warning on my screen saying there's a plane in the area within a quarter of a mile of you, maybe you want to land your drone. Anything we can do to improve the safety of these quads is a positive step forward for us. So the ADSB thing is right now in the M200, which is the commercial version of the drone from DJI. Other companies are looking at it. The chip required to do this is smaller than a dime, so they could definitely bury it into the electronics. But I think as the technology matures, as the Phantom 5 comes out, the Mavic 2 comes out, the Inspire 3 comes out, I wouldn't be shocked at all if they didn't build that kind of technology into the core uh, electronics of the quad. And I think it's a positive thing. That's the third topic. The fourth topic is something that I've been curious about for quite some time, and it has to do with other types of drones. Now, I'm not a big RC guy. I don't do RC cars. I know there's a whole subculture of RC cars and RC planes that you build yourself. I'm really a quad guy, and the reason I bought the quad, I like flying it. I think that's pretty cool, but I also like photography. I'm into aerial photography, so having a quad that I can put up and film areas that I could never see from the ground with that perspective is really what enchants me about this hobby. Well, wouldn't it be cool if I could do that underwater? So there's a whole class of products being developed that are submersibles. Now I'm gonna call them drones. They're probably remotely operated vehicles, submersibles, there's another term for it. But the submersible is a box that is waterproof that can go down to maybe 90 feet or 100 feet. And I can see what's going on down there. It's got an HD camera in it. I've got controls just like I do for flying, but I'm underwater. How cool is that? So for me, that's a whole other segment of stuff that I'm looking at really closely. Probably gonna pick one up when they finally settle and they're released, so I can do reviews on that. If you guys are interested, now I'll do a bunch of different reviews and that kind of stuff. But for me, I live near a lot of water. I think it would be so cool to put that thing down underwater and just skirt around down there and film and see what kind of fish and other creatures are down there. I just think that would be another aspect to what I do with photography that would just be wonderful. Now the challenges underwater, not to get too deep into it, no pun intended, but the challenges underwater are that the transmission from the quad back to the controller doesn't work real well through water. It's not a great transmission medium for RF uh, frequencies. So what some of the most clever ones have done, the original versions of it had a tether where you actually had a, a long cable that went to the ROV to connect it to your controller. Kind of a pain, right? Because it limits how far you can go and how deep you can go. Some of the newer ones, uh, the Open ROV project in particular, 
it's called the Trident uh, drone, and I'll do a clip on that one, um, has a floating thing like a surfboard on the surface with an antenna on it that has a tether down to the drone. So as the drone or the submersible is swimming around underwater, it's dragging that surfboard along with it with the antenna sticking up. So you always have a, a great connection to that quad through that antenna on the surfboard. So, and again, these are all brand new topics. You can tell that I've had a whole winter worth of research that I want to get into clips. So just kind of giving you a preamble of what's coming. The last thing I want to talk about is giveaways, and this is the bonus section. I haven't done any giveaways in the channel. I don't know if I'm a fan of giveaways or not a fan of giveaways, but the truth is I review a ton of products. I'm lucky that sometimes a company will sell me, send me something like a bag or a set of props or filters or something. And I feel bad that I get these things and I use them, but I don't, I can't use all of them, right? And I'm doing reviews for the benefit of you guys. So if I say yes to a company to review their product and they send it to me for review, I think I'd like to give those away, just, just to be fair. I think that's a good, honest thing to do. So I don't quite know how to do that. I'm going to look into it. I know there's a lot of mechanisms for giving stuff away, but I guess what I'm getting at is let me know if you think that's something that's good. Of course, you're going to say yes, because it's free stuff, but I don't want to seem like I'm promoting the channel through giveaways. It's more just a matter of me providing some support back to you guys for all the support you've given the channel. Because this channel has exploded over the last year. It's just been incredibly inspiring to me that all these people are starting to come here and really care about the hobby and they really care about the clips I'm putting together. So for me, that that every time I get up and I see a thumbs up on my channel, I smile and, and I want to pay you guys back for that. So the giveaways would be really simple. There'd be no big onerous process. It would just be a matter of me talking about the giveaway and you would subscribe to the channel. Maybe I'd have you, you know, comment on a particular clip or something. Maybe I'll even do them as part of this weekly vlog, but I've got a table full of stuff that I'm going to start putting up and, and giving away as part of these clips just to pay you guys back. So let me know if you think that's a good idea or you think that's a cheap shot kind of thing. I'm not trying to build subscribers. I want you guys to come here organically that you like the content and you subscribe to the channel, but I thought the giveaways would be nice for me to be able to give a little bit back to the community. So that's the last thing I'll talk about there. All right. So finally, um, we have a Twitter account now. If you want to subscribe on Twitter, I'm doing a lot of live tweets and stuff. I'm starting to attend a lot of events that have to do with quads and sometimes I'm there on the day of release, which is really nice. And then I can sort of tweet out what's going on and pictures and things like that. So if you want to get some immediate feedback, join our Twitter account. And I've got a link for that uh, up here. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was the subscribers to the channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I would suggest you do it just because there's so much going on. We're going to be releasing a ton of extra clips. I want to make sure that if you're interested in this hobby and you're really interested in this channel, that you get that notice right away. And I try not to post them in the middle of the night, but honestly, it's the middle of the night for somebody, right? So somebody's going to get woken up, but turn off the notifications, but keep the subscriptions live. Then the very last thing is I'm putting together a mailing list and I'll put an address in the comments below where if you click on that address, you can actually be added to our mailing list. It's called a newsletter. I promise you I won't hammer you with stuff, but I thought if I have a way to communicate with you directly, a lot of times I get deals offered to me by different companies where there's 10 bucks off, 50 bucks off, 100 bucks off. And I thought if I have a newsletter group, I could really quickly put out a blast to all you guys with a link where you could go to that page and you could take advantage of those opportunities. But again, I promise you I won't inundate you. Maybe I'll do one a month or I don't know. We'll see what kind of cadence makes sense to you guys. But if I'm putting too many out, you let me know. But that's a completely opt-in thing. And again, there'll be a link below where you can join that newsletter. Um, and that's pretty much all I had. So I can't wait to get started on these vlogs. Again, I really enjoy sitting down and talking about this technology. I miss talking to you guys. Uh, the clips are a little bit more regimented. This is a little more free form and I really get off on this. So anyway, if you have any questions, drop them below in the comments and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. In the meantime, I hope you guys are getting a lot of flights in. And as always, happy flying. Thank you.